Hello, my name is Brett. This is a review for episode seven and eight of Velma. I'm here with my co-host. Would you introduce yourself, please? Feeling the same way. Hello, Crisis Actors. It's Mary. And today we are on our penultimate review of season one of Velma. Oh, thank God. I don't think that we'll be continuing into season two, but who knows? Maybe we're crazy enough to agree to it. So in episode seven is entitled Fog Fest and episode eight is called A Velma in the Woods. Episode seven theme is that men have life really, really easy. So Velma yeah. goes undercover as a man at Fog Fest to warn everyone that the serial killer is in fact not a ghost and this is only possible because they would only listen to a man because men have it so easy don't they mary <laughs> the the <laughs> opening of episode seven was slightly better than other ones because i thought wow like we're really shifting the focus back to solving mystery a murder mystery instead of all of the distractions of feminist philosophy and, you know, romantic subplots that never go anywhere because Velma is a terrible person. But then we were quickly distracted again. So she chooses to cross dress to get into Fogfest because you can't get in as a single woman, but only single men are allowed in. And she gets magically thinner by the power of manhood. That's as another all her thing. Fat I was, rolls disappear. I was wondering about. She was instantly skinny as soon as she was cross-dressing in a men's suit which was interesting so yeah she's allowed in because she is a man people listen to her speak authoritatively because she they think she is a man even though it's not believable at all um does she even goes around getting awards like <laughs> for her stand-up comedy she for... applies for a job while yes. dressed like a slob because uh, right next to a perfectly dressed woman who doesn't get yeah. the job because she's a woman do you get it she finds guys? out that all of her disgusting behaviors as a woman are actually rewarded when she is a man such as uh eating slob like looking slovenly eating like a slob never washing her hands after going to a public restroom uh, she these are all just things up that are excused she when she is dressed up. as a man. And people automatically listen to her when she goes up to announce, yes. uh, to make her PSA, because she is a man. Even though I highly doubt that like a 5'1 Indian man with the voice of a teenage girl would be seen as authoritative. It doesn't um, Anything matter. to go with the narrative that men have it easier. And she openly says... Uh, that none of her actions have consequences when she was perceived as a man. Which is interesting because none of her actions have consequences when she's a woman. No, yeah. <laughs> they all work in her favor anyway because Daphne, Fred, and Norville still like her. And Norville's worse than ever because mm -hmm. he's not only a bad boyfriend, he's just a bad person. Because right. Because Gigi keeps telling him very, very plainly that... You know, you're still interested in Velma. Well, she says that in episode eight. But in episode seven, uh, Norville only wants to become the king of Fogfest, supposedly because he wants to help his girlfriend. But really, it's because he's a guy who doesn't understand women. And he's doing it really for his own gratification. Get it, guys? Because they're men. And men are so bad and have it so easy. Gigi is one of the most tolerable characters. I think Daphne yes. would come second as a tolerable character. Yet oh, far, they're continuously mistreated by both Velma and Norville. Yeah. And I think you're right that Gigi is for Gigi is actually kind of the the top as being the one who's there to like her rationality is there to like shine a light on the absolute stupidity of mm -hmm. everyone else, right. but it's still not good. Gigi and Daphne are the only characters in this show that have even the some semblance of emotional intelligence. Uh, or self-awareness. Yeah, I mean, um, I, even at the beginning of episode seven, we see Velma 
continuing to ignore Daphne, even though she claims to care about her and be interested in her as a friend or more than a friend. She goes off on her own journey to find her mom and completely ignores Daphne's problem, which is the same as her own, that she is estranged from her parents and they, was abandoned by her parents. In, a, in the hands of a story that wasn't so disgustingly cynical, you could bring these characters together with their yeah. shared horror of a life without their biological, well, in this case, one's biological parents and one's biological mother. Yeah. But because this isn't in the hands of competent writers who have any semblance of actual human decency, what you get is Hollywood snark being a, overlaid the the foundation of human suffering, which is played for a laugh. It, you know, as somebody who doesn't get offended by humor, I get offended when the humor is just really, really bad. The meta is, humor continued in these two episodes, the meta specifically humor meta humor that is aimed at showrunners and script writers, even though most of the people watching obviously don't fit that demographic. It's like they specifically made this show to appeal to Charlie Grandy or Shonda Rhimes or Mindy Kaling instead of normal people in the audience, especially people who are interested in Scooby-Doo still, if they've stayed on the ba the bandwagon this long. You ever um, heard the, the term like a writer's writer or an actor's yes. actor? This is work. This usually is somehow, means a bad thing in my book. Yeah, no, it does. It does <laughs> but I'm saying, but it, what it can mean usually is somebody who is so focused on the technical elements that it only appeals to people with an inside baseball understanding of what they're doing. Mm -hmm. This is both, this is if a kindergartner was trying to do inside baseball on their, on their industry. It's not funny. It's not fun. It's not entertaining. It's not clever. It's not anything worth any other human being's interest excitement, happiness, or joy. It is just bad. The meta humor treats the audience like they are sub 80 IQ. Yes. And even admits that they are doing it in the dialogue. So they keep showing these title cards for every single flashback scene because they keep jumping around the timeline. And they're, it says whose flashback it is and exactly the hour at which it happened. And cracks a joke at the fact that it's making it that plain to you while I'm just thinking you're trying to get out of drawing more frames Actual of animation <laughs> and maybe you're filling up time if you had any doubt whatsoever that Velma Dinkley is an absolute abhorrent human being she fakes one of her, her uh, fl or what do you call them one yeah. of her her hallucination episodes she fakes a mental illness condition to get sympathy and get Daphne to go along with her into the woods. It's I mean, it's not yeah. even that she wants Daphne's help solving the mystery she of her mother's her disappearance. She is only faking her hallucination episode to convince Daphne not to spend time with another friend, because Olive. Because she can't allow other people to be happy because Daphne is she a literally like bad picked person. up a vase with a plant in it and threw it at Daphne's house yes. and raged out at her and we're supposed to sympathize with her still like it's just she's freaking out at being yeah. ignored even though she has ignored every person who cares about her there's, for this entire season there's an even creepier comment in which Fred I'm sorry Norville says that the second hottest woman in school is his own mother I don't know yeah. what the frick that was about, but don't holy know. crap. Really and weird. And continued sexualization of children with once again. Olive and Daphne shooting sexy calendars. They're right. teenagers. Uh, and then and Gigi trying to seduce Norville literally shows her like in yes. the nude. And um, Fred, maybe worse than all of them, is once again treated like an absolute piece of crap in both episodes in episode right. seven he has to try and win win fog fest king so that his dad can sell their his dad threatens to kick him out of, out, the out of the house, house if he doesn't win fog king yeah. and uh so that's what he's concerned about throughout most of episode seven and episode he, he keeps eight. being foiled yeah. but there are 
there are more examples where Fred is just congratulated for being alive and existing as a white white male. male. And then in episode eight, they do a whole thing where Fred gets locked in the serial killer's uh, underground lair with the brains of the women that have been murdered. And I guess, have they technically been murdered if the brains are still alive? I I don't don't even know. I mean, I think this is... And you just get 20 minutes uh, (laughs) over the course of this episode of Fred being ritualistically humiliated by him. Like, he humiliates himself constantly. And then we uh, we find out that even though there's four missing minority children, of course, society only cares about the missing white male. Get it, guys? Because society only cares about white men. They literally have a helicopter rescue team over the crag in the cliff that these four have fallen into. And then... Uh, a plane goes by with a banner saying that Fred is missing and they leave them there to die because the disappearance of a white, a rich white male from a rich white family is more important than saving their lives. Absolutely hilarious. <laughs> it's so clever, guys. Mary, do you care about anything else in this episode? Is there anything else you wanted to talk about? Uh, the one thing I wanted to mention is that Velma admits fault for the first time ever in the show's history so far uh, to Daphne after admitting that she was cross-dressing and lying to her, having a private personal conversation with Daphne about her feelings while pretending to be a stranger. She does apologize, but then immediately uh, none of her other actions have consequences and she, I'm sure, will not admit fault again in the series. It's not funny. It's not fun. It's not clever. It's not entertaining. You thought you ate. But you didn't. It's not worth your time. Don't watch it. Watch these reviews. We'll see you next (laughs) week for the final episode. See ya. Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye, guys.